Welcome back. Welcome back to our series in power system analysis. In the previous chapters or the previous lectures, we spoke about power transformers. And we showed the importance of a power transformers in our electric network. And also we discussed the important role that the transformers played in 1800 when there was debate between direct current and alternating current, AC and DC. Today, we are going to start the transmission line. Before we start the transmission line modeling, I want to take this 20 minutes to explain about the transmission line characteristics or parameters. Let's start by highlight the main parameters from an electric point of view for a transmission. Let's get a pen and let's start. So the transmission line is made of, you have series, we have series. Transmission line is made of conductors, could be copper, aluminum, steel reinforced. We're gonna discuss this type, but it's made of conductors, which means it's made of resistance made of a series of resistance series of R series of X for the inductance XL and also it's made of sharp of capacitance so XC and made of shunt conductance and also shunt of conductors okay so transmission line is made of parameters made of series resistance of series inductance made of shunt capacitance and shunt conductance we will go through each one of them and we will explain from a high level perspective before we go into the modeling I want to explain the actual uh, parameters of a transmission line. Okay, what's the transmission line made of? Let's talk about the overhead. The overhead transmission line is made of support structures, conductors, insulators, support structures, conductors, the line post insulator, or we also have very important items called overhead earth wire or known as a ground wire or earth wire depending on which country you live in or which standard you follow so okay let's sketch let me sketch a transmission line an overhead perspective i have a support structures i will have a support structures have a long rod or line post insulators. This I will have an insulator, and then I will have a conductor running through, and then I will have the overhead earth wire. This is known as overhead earth wire. This is our the conductors. This is the insulators. This is my support structure. This is, is my support structure. And this is my overhead earth wire, also known as a ground wire. Also, if you want to go more pedantic, you will have a grounding system as well. You will have an electrode system. For us, we are interested in the top side for now because we are going to study the parameters of this conductor for a transmission. That's what we are going to study. Let's focus more the camera. Is that clear? That's exactly what we are focusing on during our session. So we said the conductors are made of series resistance. It's made up of series resistance and series inductance that's what we 
uh, that's what we said. Now, transmission line. The most common used one is ACSR. Is ACSR aluminium conductor steel reinforced? A C S R conductors. You can have also aluminium alloy conductors. You can have also triple A C conductors. But the most used one is aluminium conductor steel reinforced type. Steel reinforced type. Now, let's start with the resistance. What's the resistance? If you go back to physics, to the basics concept of physics, what is it? It's equal to rho L divided by A. R resistance is equal to rho. I need to note here the temperature because it's a very important to us when it comes to transmission line system. And L is the length of it divided by the cross section area of the conductor. So the coefficient, this is my conductor, this is rho, my resistivity of the conductor, this is my cross-section area of the conductor, this is my length of the conductor. That's how I do this system. Now, this temperature T, because when you change the temperature, the actual resistivity of my conductor, if it's made of aluminium or if it's made of copper, it's irrespective or steel the temperature will affect my resistivity. What's my resistivity is my ability to conduct current. And what's the role of my transmission line system based on a previous discussion is basically to transmit current from point A to point B and deliver a problem. That's what we do now. Let me give you a quick values for under 25 degrees, under set degrees 20 or 25 degrees, I have for the copper rho for the copper, the row for the copper would be equal to 1.77, 1.77, 10 to the minus 8 ohm meter. That's the resistivity. For an aluminium, it's equal to, for rho for the aluminium, it's equal to 2.83, 2.83, 10 to the minus 8, 2.83, 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. For the steel, for the steel, it's equal to, it's between 12 to 88. It's between 12 to 88, 10 to the minus 8 ohm per meters. Why I stated the copper, aluminium, and steel? Okay, the most, previously, the copper conductors are the best conductive material for us. But the copper is a little bit expensive, also it's steel. Aluminium, it's cheaper. See, the raw, it's still okay. It's not much different. Maybe one in a difference. But it's not strong. So that's why I will have a steel reinforced. That's why I'm interested also to know the resistivity of a steel. And this is the resistivity. Depending on what type of steel you're using, value between 12 to 88, 10 to the minus 8 ohm per meter. Cross-section area. We all know how to calculate the cross-section area. We have a conductor. Usually the conductor is made of a strand. And each strand has a diameter. So for me, I can calculate multiple options. I calculate the actual each strand area and multiply by the number of strand. I will end up having my uh, area. The length is the length of your conductor. Now, what will happen when my temperature changes? When my temperature changes, I will apply the following equation. What will happen when the temperature changes? When the temperature changes, it was first, it was at T1. At temperature 1, it was first, and then changed to temperature 2. It will be equal multiplied in here. I do. T1 
divided by T1 is the old temperature, T2 is a new temperature, T is the temperature constant. This is known as temperature constant. And it's being given for copper, aluminium, and steel, and for different material. For a, for a, for a copper, sorry, let's, for the copper, it's given to be T, it's 241 degree. 241 degree, and for aluminium, for the aluminium, is 228 degrees. And for the steel, it's between 180, for the steel, it's between 180 to 980 degrees, all of it in Celsius. For the copper is 241, for the aluminium 228, for the steel is 180 to 980 degree Celsius. Now, we have a lot of equation, a lot of examples in our book. We do have a lot of examples in our book and we can start solving equations, examples, when the temperature changes, what will happen to the resistance of our system. Let's pause it for a few minutes to digest this information. Okay. Let's now do an example. I have a copper conductor made of strand, made of 12 strand. Every strand, each strand has a diameter of 3.373 millimeters. 3.373 millimeters. Now, I need, I need to find R when it's at 50 degrees Celsius. R at the resistance of this conductor for a length per kilometers. I want to design it for to be ohm per kilometers. So per thousand meters. So per thousand meters. I want to design the system. I want to determine the resistance of this system at a 50 degree when its uh, length is 1000 meters. Number one, I have to determine my area A. How do I determine my, my area A? I determine my area A by finding the area per strand. What's the area per strand? Pi r squared. So the area is 12 strand multiply by the area per strand, it's a pi r squared. What's r? It's r squared is d squared over 4, which is, this is my diameter. So the area A will be equal to, the area A will be equal to 107.2, 107.2 millimeter squared. millimeter squared. Is that clear? Step number one. Step number two is L. I want the unit to be ohm per kilometer, per thousand meters. So I have L. Now for this, I have to find. Now remember, remember rho of the copper, rho of the copper, it's equal to 1.77, 10 to the minus 8, this is ohm per meter at 20 degrees Celsius. This is at a standard temperature. So what I do now is I have to find the new rho. I have rho at 50 degrees. It's equal to 1 rho at 20 degrees. It's equal to 1.77, 10 to the minus 8, multiplied by 50 degrees plus. What's the T for the system? It's 241 plus 241 divided by 20 plus 241. The answer will be that the answer will be 1.973 10 to the minus 8. 1.973 10 to the minus 8 um, 
a parameter. That's the resistivity at a 50 degree. That's the resistivity at a 50 degree. Now, all I have to do now is I put the resistance, the R of the DC system. Now, from a DC perspective, all I have to do is apply this equations. All I have to do is I will apply this equation, which is equal to R of the DC system or RDC, the pure resistive, the pure resistive at a 50 degrees will be equal to rho, which is 1.77. 10 to the minus 8, rho L multiplied by 1000, divide by A, which is 100. I need to put it into square meters. I need to put it into A, a square meters. So I have to put it into, divide it by 10 to the minus 6. So it's going to be 1.072 10 to the minus 4. The answer for the system will be 0 0.188 equal to 0 0.188 ohm per kilometers ohm per kilometer so every thousand meters every thousand meters under 50 degree of this 12 strand copper conductors with a strand diameter of 3.373 millimeters I end up with 0 0.188 ohm per kilometers is it clear now how do I determine the type, the actual resistance of a specific type of a conductor? That's one of the most important aspect in my, in my system. Now, it's worth noting that RDC and R and the RAC they're almost identical. This is slightly different, which is can be neglected. That's also apply under I under the AC conditions. So when I have a 50 Hertz, because the Hertz is very low, 50 Hertz is not a high amount, not a high value. It is acceptable for me. It is acceptable for me to consider to consider RDC. It's almost same as RIC, uh, AC. So. The alternating current resistance can be used as this one, or very close to it. If you ever work, if you ever work into a manufacturing, conductors manufacturing, you guys will be able to test and verify and do simulation based on this data. Is that clear? That's a, from a resistance perspective. That's from a resistance perspective. Before we go into inductance perspective, inductor perspective, I want to talk about the leakage or the shunt conductance. I want to talk about this element, the shunt uh, conductance of a transmission. I want to talk about the shunt. Now, the shunt conductance account. What's a shunt conductance? The shunt conductance account for real power losses between conductors or between conductors and the ground. That's known as a real shunt conductance. This is cause a real power losses into my uh, transmission network. For an overhead. For an overhead system how does this happen let's say i have a pole i have a conductor's going this way and i have another this is my three-phase system i could have losses and i could have losses to ground what will happen for an overhead wire with the, with the power losses is due to leakage current at the insulator how can i take this Remember, in here, I connect this through an insulator. I could have a current leakage on an insulator or leakage due to corona. Leakage due to a corona issue. Now let's talk about, let's talk about insulator, let's talk about an insulator leakage. What's an insulator leakage? 
you have a device that's called an insulator on this on the bottom side of the insulator connected to the steel structure to a steel structure of the support structure for the transmission pole or tower on the other side you have the conductor is held using a clamp AGS unit any type of hold this it's an insulation medium this distance depend on the voltage rating sometimes there will be dust on top of the insulator will be made of salt will be formed will be any type that made it slightly conductive and then you will have a leakage this leakage could cause us a real power losses that's one element what about the corona how does the corona effect play role the corona happen when you have a high voltage or very big strong electric field at a surface that force the air to be electrically conductive it will cause the air to be the air will be become electrically ionized when the air is electrically ionized that means it, the air now can be conductive and that's what cause the corona effect into our transmission line modeling it's worth noting it's worth noting one element that all this effect compared to i squared r are very 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 small are very small compared to i squared r all these losses that i'm talking about are almost neglected when it comes to i squared r is that clear let's take a moment to digest this information that we just spoke about now so so far we covered two elements we covered two elements one element is the resistance one element is the shunt conductance now um, regarding the shunt capacitance we will cover at the end of this course the reason why we will only consider the shunt capacitance if a, the length of the transmission line exceeds certain distance which we will cover under different under different lectures now we are going to talk about inductance inductance why there is an inductance okay we spoke about the effect of magnetic field from physics we have a current going through a wire it will create a magnetic field based on ampere law. I have a H magnetic field intensity H under ampere law. I have a current I have H I have a permeability I have that permeability of permi I have this uh, mu I have mu because I'm using a material the permeability the permeability mu exists so therefore i have a magnetic field density b is equal to mu h remember we spoke all this into our when we did the transformers and then because i have a cross section area and I have a b i have a flux file and therefore i have an inductance i have a flux phi, so therefore i will have an inductance so that's how that's how the leakage exists that's how you have as per the ampere L, it's equal to the inductance is equal to divided by I. This is related to a flux. This is the from the flux linkage. This is due to a flux linkage. Now, without going into deep analysis, this course it's not part of the scope, it's not to study the magnetic circuit. But I need you. To understand what's a linkage, what's L, where did it come from, how did it come from, because the, we will use the parameters of the transmission line, so we can create a model and we start doing power flow and modeling. So how does L exist? I wanna I wanna use a cylindrical. This is when we did physics. We gave an example for a cylinder. Inside the cylinder, we will have an internal L and we have an external one. 
So now let's look at let's look at a cylindrical, and we will do a couple of uh, assessment, and you will see that if you have a cylindrical. This will have an internal effect. This is will have an arc, and this I want to take a an internal section, which is known as L internal. This is you will have an H of X, and this, if you look at L internal, will have L internal will be equal to the answer for this one will be equal to one half ten to the minus seven. 10 to the minus 7 Henry per meter. This because the mu zero. This is for because of the mu zero. For the external, L external, for an external L, L external, which is equal to L12, it will be equal. This will be in respect to 10 to the minus 7. This will be equal to 2 10 to the minus 7 log natural. natural of log natural of d2 over d1, d2 over d1 Henry per meter. What's a d2 and d1? It's the distance. It's the distance in respect of what we guys are doing. So now, this will give us the total flux linkage. Due to the total flux linkage out to distance D. D is, this D1 is the actual diameter. This system, from a conductor perspective, I can take it into more, and I say L will be equal to, I can take it more in 2 10 to the minus 7. 2 10 to the minus 7 log natural of geometric mean radius, mean distance over geometric mean radius. So GMD, geometric mean distance between the conductors and geometric mean radius is the actual geometric mean radius of your conductor, of your conductor. And that's how we calculate the inductance of a, uh, of a inductor of a conductor. You have a conductor, that's what we do. That's how we determine the inductance of a conductor. Now, we As an electrical engineer, where this will help us? Now, we determined R, we determined L, we will determine the area stage C. But now, let's look at the circuit modeling of a transmission using the transmission line parameters. Before we go into the modeling, we need to divide we need to divide our transmission line into three sections. We have a short transmission line, medium transmission line, long transmission line. For every single category, our modeling will change. Let's look at let's look at what's a what's a short transmission. What's a short Transmission line, and then what's a what's a medium? Let's first look at the short transmission. So short transmission line depend. This all depend on the actual uh, voltage level. But let's look at it from a generic point of view. There is a, a certain distance that this that will govern this short. Usually it's about 80 kilometers. So 0 to 80 kilometers. 
known as a short transmission line. Short transmission line. Medium transmission line is between 80, so medium transmission line is between 80 kilometers to 160 kilometers. Long transmission line bigger than 160 kilometers. Bigger than 160 kilometers. For each conditions, I represent my network in a different way. Let's have a look at the first two to compare the first two. What's the difference will be between this condition and this condition? Let's For a short transmission line, I will neglect, I will neglect totally the capacitors. That's why I didn't want to cover them up. For a short transmission line, I will neglect the capacitance of it. So the transmission line, I can take it as this. I have R, Jx. I have R and Jx. Of course, this R and JX will depend on the length. Depend on the length. That's why if you go and you search any catalog for any conductors, it will give you R in ohm per kilometers. It will give you X in ohm per kilometers. So this is for a short. This is representation for a short transmission line. That's for a short transmission line representations. When I come to medium length transmission line, when I come to a medium length transmission line, let me get a different color. I still have this. This will be y over 2, y over 2. For a medium transmission line, I have to take into consideration, I have to take into consideration the actual capacitance. For a medium, that's how I consider it. This is for a medium transmission That's my circuit representation for a medium transmission uh, line system. Is that clear? For a long transmission line, which is what we will do at the end of this course, for a long transmission line, we will use a section of this. We will use a section of uh, these elements. Do you guys have any questions so far? Do you have any question so far? So today, what did we cover today? We covered part of the parameters of a transmission line network. That's one. We spoke about resistance, inductance, and we spoke about conductance, shunt conductance. We showed also that there is also shunt capacitance. We showed the effect of temperature in regard to the R resistance. And we showed that the actual resistance, we showed the actual resistance for the DC and AC. We said it's almost the same, can be considered the same. The, the unit of these are ohm per kilometers or ohm per meter. We did an example for a change in temperature. We showed the equation L how the L, why L exists, we showed it exists because the magnetic field intensity H exists, mu exists, 
B exists because it's from UH, there's a cross section area, there I have a flux linkage, and then I have L, it's equal to flux linkage divided by the current. In a simple word. And then we spoke about transmission line modeling. These are the model of a short and a medium transmission line. Into this kind of lectures, series lectures, we are not going to consider the long transmission uh, line yet. We will consider under separate lecture. So now for the next lectures, we are going to focus on the calculation or finding the parameters, the ABC parameters for a short and a medium transmission line. And we need to do some power flow analysis using this method. I hope that's a clear. Let's now pause and do some examples.